Hey besties and welcome or welcome back to my channel for anyone who's new here. I'm Sophia and I love reading romance books. Now today we're going to be going through my June and July reading wrap up. I think I managed to read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine books in the past two months, which is pretty standard for me. And I will admit I've been in a massive reading slump for almost two weeks now. I have not touched a book for almost two weeks. I think it's been 11 days and it's making me a little bit sad um but i think i've sort of started deriving some techniques and some ways that i'm going to try and get out of it i might make a video on it so stay tuned for that i think it'll be really fun but yeah so today we're going to be going through all the books that i read in the past two months i like rating my books both on like a five star rating of like how much i enjoy them as well as on a spicy scale so i typically base it off how much spice and then if it's like intense smart like kinky or whatever it'll get like a higher rating as well generally with the like more intense smut it's more abundant in the book anyway so it kind of correlates but yeah let's get into the first one so this first book i've already spoken at length in a couple of my other videos so i'm going to try and keep it to a minimum here because i don't want to bore you but the first book that i read in june is fourth wing by rebecca yaros fourth wing follows our heroine violet who has essentially dedicated her entire life to study with the expectation that she will be entering the scribe quadrant at basgath war college but her mum who is a higher up commander of the college decides to throw a little spanner in the works and she transfers Violet to the Dragon Riders Quadrant. Now Violet has a connective tissue disorder called Ella's Danlos Syndrome, I think that's how you pronounce it, which does make her pretty physically weak and the Riders Quadrant is a very physically demanding quadrant. It's also very very dangerous so Violet doesn't like her chances there. Now in the Riders Quadrant we also meet Mr. Zayden Wilson. He... <laughs> He is Shadow Daddy. He is so hot. Zayden does have a little bit of hatred towards Violet just because of her family and their past together because there is a whole lot of history that takes place in this book. And so when Violet meets Zayden, a little enemies to lovers, tension-filled, forced proximity relationship ensues because Zayden is also her wing leader, which is kind of like her squadron leader. This one has a bunch of deadly trials paced really, really well throughout the book and I just absolutely loved the immersion that I found in this one. I did, of course, give it a 5 out of five stars and I think I would probably give it a 2.5 out of five on my spicy scale. So the next book that I read was Tempt by Melanie Harlow. This is an ex-boyfriend's dad age gap romance with a curvy heroine. Now Millie is kind of down on her luck in the romance scene which is made even worse by the fact that she is a wedding planner so she is surrounded by love in her everyday life and she's actually found herself organizing her ex-boyfriend's wedding. One night when she is out of town she takes a little risk and ends up hooking up with a super charming, super handsome older guy named Zach. It's fun, it's sexy, but ultimately they go their separate ways and cut all contact. So we kind of come forward a few months to the rehearsal dinner for Millie's ex-boyfriend's wedding and guess who shows up? Guess who shows up? None other than Mr. Zach, who is coincidentally the father of the group. This one is full of sneaking around and some questionable morals and it's unlike anything else I've ever read before from Melanie. I also really, really loved Millie. Lily's character and the fact that she had ideas and aspirations of opening up a plus size wedding boutique. I really really loved that and I loved seeing that kind of character arc come to fruition. So I ended up giving this book a 3.75 out of a 5 and I think I gave it a 2.5 out of 5 on my spicy scale. This next book is actually another one of my favorites so far this year. This is Crimson River by Devney Perry. This one follows Lila Eden who is a workaholic and has essentially dedicated the last 10 years of her life to developing her coffee shop and getting it up and running. And for the first time in like a year, her sister kind of storms into the coffee shop and orders Lila to take a day off. And so to give her sister a little bit of peace of mind, Lila does go for a hike, but she has a little bit of a strange interaction, a strange little run-in with a man in the forest. Now this man may or may not strangle Lila, so she does file a police report, but nothing really comes of it until Vance stumbles into town. Vance is a cop with a tarnished badge and he is determined to solve a murder mystery that happened roughly 10 years ago in his town. Coincidentally the man that Lila ran into in the forest is the man that Vance is after and so they kind of team up and their relationship develops alongside the murder mystery. I absolutely adored this book. I think it is probably my favorite of Devney Perry 
reviews and so obviously I gave it a five star and I think I would probably give it a two out of five on the spicy scale. There's quite a bit of smut in this one, definitely more than any of Devney's other books that I've read, but it doesn't go into like a whole lot of detail and it's not like that steamy. So yeah, a two out of five for this bad boy, but like five stars because I really loved it. Okay, next up. This is controversial. Um, I listened to the A Court of Thorns and Roses audiobook by Sarah J Maas. I know I said in one of my like TBR videos that I didn't love the narrator, but I ended up listening to it because I just did not have the motivation to actually pick this one up and read it physically. But I was like on a bit of a time constraint because I was meeting up with my sisters and we wanted to talk about this book, but I hadn't read it. So I had to read it. And yeah, I listened to the audiobook. <laughs> so I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this book, but if not, it follows Feyre, who is a human girl. And she essentially has to fend for herself and her family after their fall from grace. Now, while she is out hunting, she ends up killing a fair fairy fairy I've listened to the audiobook and I still don't know. A fairy who is in animal form, which has some very, very serious repercussions in their world because the fairies and the humans don't sort of mingle. And so as a result, Feyre finds herself being taken back to the fairy realms by Tamlin and she's kind of just allowed to live her life just under his supervision and in his court. Honestly, I think I probably would have liked this one more if I did read it physically. So I'm trying not to be too harsh with my rating of a three star. That being said, I never really came to care about anything happening in this book until the sort of last 40%. And even then, the only character I was actually invested in and like concerned about was Lucian. Now I am actually currently listening to Akamath just kind of for the sake of it and to see what the hype is about. I'm sort of switching between reading that one physically and listening to it. So it's gonna be interesting to see my opinion on that one, hopefully. Hopefully I like it a bit more than Akatar. Okay, these next two I read in my 24 hour readathon, so I'm gonna try and keep it brief. But the first one that I read in that vlog was Does It Hurt by H.D. Carlton. This one is a romance with a bit of a thriller mystery plot line. So Soya, our heroine, is on the run from something that you do learn about in this book, but she's in the business of sleeping with men and stealing their identities. <laughs> but when she does this to our hero Enzo, he finds out. Out. And to punish her, he takes her out on his boat and dunks her head into shark infested waters. <laughs> kind of fucked up, um, but in his rush, he forgets to check the weather and they end up shipwrecking on this strange little island with a lighthouse and a creepy caretaker. This book was wild, it was crazy, but I loved it. Admittedly, the relationship in this one did progress a little bit quickly for my liking. It kind of swung from, oh my god, I hate you so much, I'm gonna tear your throat out, to, oh my god, I would die for you a little bit quickly um within like a couple of chapters which be quick for my liking um but I still love this one I still gave it a four out of five star because there was so much other stuff happening that like that didn't really subtract from the story too much for me um and I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 on the spicy scale then next up in my readathon I read Powerless by Elsie Silver I've loved every other one of Elsie's books that I've read so I went into this one expecting no less however it kind of disappointed me I wanted more hockey from Jasper and I wanted more dancing from Sloane the two characters kind of just went on a road trip to deliver hay and had a bunch of weird awkward interactions to me it just felt like there really wasn't any natural progression in their relationship it felt like they were being awkward and like hiding their feelings from one another to kissing and being in a relationship and like entirely comfortable with each other i think this one may have benefited a little bit if it was wrote in a similar fashion to rewrite our story by kat singleton with the dual timelines because we're supposed to believe that sloan and jasper are childhood friends but there is no evidence of that and they're so awkward um, to one another that it really doesn't feel like they have any history together. So yeah, their relationship progression was just a little bit strange, a little bit unbelievable for my tastes. Um, I think I gave this one a 3.5 star in my video, but I'm probably gonna switch it down to a three star and I would give it maybe a 2.5 out of five on my spicy scale. Of course, there was still some good moments in this book and my experience was most definitely impacted by the fact that I was incredibly sleep deprived. But you know, 
overall I think this one was just a little bit mediocre. So the next book I actually read as an arc it was Come Morning Light by Charlotte Day. Thank you so much to Charlotte for letting me read this one early. Now the premise of this book is so fun in that it's a kind of like bachelor bachelorette party where the engaged couple invites three to four of their single friends to kind of come together and engage in a bunch of party games and they're like stuck on this island in this mansion and the whole premise of this book is so so fun and of course all of the party games have a varying level of sexiness and tension and yeah they get kind of more and more intense as the night goes on. There is also some thriller and mystery aspects to this book which made it very very interesting to read. I definitely think this book would be a fantastic time for anyone who is not me. Now I can read almost anything. I can read non-con, I can read dub con and I'm fine with it. I might not love it but I'm not going to get triggered by it. But the one I guess triggering thing for me in books is when a character is reliving a traumatic experience whether that be through a PTSD flashback or a panic attack um, and then there is just between the two main characters there is no comforting there's no discussion and they just end up fucking on the next page. I know that for some people sex can be an emotional release and a way of connection in a moment of vulnerability but for me it just when that happens in my books it makes me feel pretty uncomfortable and honestly a little bit upset and unfortunately for me there's not really a way that I can watch out for this kind of thing in trigger warnings because I love reading about PTSD and anxiety when it is represented in books. I think it's fantastic. It's just when it's not handled in a way that is like good for me that I get a bit upset about it. So yeah I did end up docking two stars off of this book otherwise it would have been a four star read for me but I did bring it down to a two star so yeah that did impact my experience with it but otherwise I think this is a really really good book. It's very fun. It's unlike anything I've ever read before and I think I would probably give it a 3.5 to four stars out of five on my spicy scale. Next up in July I actually read my most anticipated read of this year and that was of course Meet Your Match by Candy Steiner. This one follows Maven who is an up-and-coming reporter slash influencer. Her, her job title is a little bit strange but she shadows Vince who is Tampa Bay's new hotshot rookie hockey player. That was a mouthful for approximately a month just kind of following him around, noting down his routine and writing a lot of articles and making it social media posts and all of that kind of stuff on him to like satisfy the fans I suppose. Now this book was fun and the smart was really really hot. I I loved Vince's character but Maven really rubbed me the wrong way. Now I love a grumpy heroine in books, do not get me wrong, they are some of my favourite characters but Maven I think took it a little bit too far. She has this grudge against essentially all professional athletes and kind of for good reason her ex-boyfriend was an absolute asshole, um, and he was a professional golfer and so it's kind of made her form this opinion that professional athletes just do good things for media attention and despite Vince showing her time and time again that that's that's just not true and that they actually can be good people. Her opinion never changes and her internal narrative stays the same for the entire book. And she just continues to be this abrasive and honestly awful to read about character. I would probably love her if she had some character development and her opinions changed progressively throughout the book but they don't. Now with all of that being said I did still give this one a 3.75 out of 5 star rating and that is purely for Vince and the character dynamic of the guys on the hockey team because that was incredible. Now I did also give this one a 3 out of 5 on the spicy scale because there are some really really hot sex scenes in here. I'm very very excited for the next books in this series. I think they have some fantastic potential and yeah the only thing that kind of took away from this one was just Maven's character. And finally before my massive reading slump kicked in, I read Kingdom Fall by Aza Varelli. This one is a dark nanny romance with a mystery subplot. So our hero Alessio is kind of the enforcer for the society, the society being a sort of mafia, sort of cult organization. And Alessio has a little, I think he's six, a little six-year-old boy who is in need of a new nanny and so he hires Natalia. So Natalia gets hired, moves in with them and essentially immediately begins facing challenges just because she's an outsider to the society. She has actually also had her vocal cords slashed which makes things even harder for her because she cannot speak. I did really really love the mute representation and aspect of this book because 
Natalia teaches Nino how to sign and it just made for some really really sweet moments when he would speak to Natalia and only Natalia. It was just so cute. It really made me smile. Nino as a whole was just such a little cutie and I really loved how Aza Varelli portrayed a child in this scenario. I think it was really really well done and I just loved the entire dynamic and of course I did grow to love Alessio despite his grouchiness and standoffish nature and it was so so sweet. Alessio kind of has no idea how to be a father so oh, Natalia teaches them as they go and oh my god the moments between him and Nino <gasps> actually made me swoon. They were so sweet. Yeah, this one certainly has a lot of drama in it and by crikey do these characters go to hell and back together and against each other. Um, but I loved it so much. They do get their happy ending and I did give it a 4.25 stars and probably a 3 out of 5 on my spicy scale. So there we have all of the books that I read in June and July plus Come Morning Light. I've also read like half of five other books but obviously I can't count them in this. So yeah, I honestly think I had a pretty decent two months. There was some iffy books in there but there was also some really really good ones. At this point I'm just hoping and praying that I can get out of my reading slump because it is awful. Let me tell you I'm not enjoying myself right now. I'm not living laughing or loving but that's okay. We'll get through it. Um, Thank you so so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. My Instagram is in the description below if you would like to check it out. I'm trying to be a little bit more active over on there. I say that tentatively and with a grain of salt. But yeah, thank you so, so much for watching and I really hope that I will see you in the next one. Bye!